hi and welcome to a CDH deck tech video and also something of a card review for Rashmi and Ragavan, a Temur Storm Thief deck of sorts. So it's a 4 mana cost, red, blue, green and 1 generic elf monkey. 2, 4, whenever you cast your first spell during each of your turn, exile the top card of your of target opponent's library and create a treasure token. Then you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost if the spell's mana value is less than the number of artifacts you control. If you don't cast it this way, you may cast it this turn. So first off, I actually really like the combination of two different legendaries into one card. I think that's a better way than doing partners, but that's a different video. But the li I really like the thematic of it. It's like a desperate alliance, well in this case a elf and a monkey going to war versus Phyrexians. Now when you evaluate commanders, you always have to look at all of the existing things and see if there's something that is doing the exact same thing, but better. And yeah, the truth is that there is already something that is on the exact same colors that is doing the same thing but something like better. Well, there are some tweaks and some advantages with the Rashmi thing, but Paco, when Paco attacks, exile the top card of each player's library and that you may cast those spells later. You're storing them. In Rashmi's case, you have to cast them now, instantly for free, or in during this turn later by paying their mana cost. But in Haldan's and Apaco's case, you can store them. You can cast them later in the future. So you're collecting things, but also you're hitting four things where Rashmi is only hitting one thing. I would like to throw in T-Balt Cosmic Imposter here as well. Plus two, exile the top card of each player's library, so you're also getting four cards from that guy. And you're storing them too. You don't need to cast them instantly, you can cast them later. Now t are in different colors, it's black, uh, red, so that's different. And he's also ex really expensive, like seven mana is quite a lot. We could actually draw that same argument for Pakun Haldan as well. It's actually really expensive getting that dog into play. It's five mana and then three more for Haldan later. However, when you look at it in more detail, Mana Vault, you Lotus are really effective at getting your Paco into play. A Mana Vault won't help you or will help you a tiny bit, but only with the colorless mana. With Rashmi's case, you still need to generate free colored mana, while in Paco's case, a turn 1 Mana Vault is a turn 2 Paco. And due to the fact that you're collecting cards when Paco attacks, you're storing value, so when you cast Haldan later, you've already collected card draw for Paco already. So I actually do think just because that Paco is free colorless and you can pay them separately, like Paco first and then Haldan later, it's actually much easier to get your Paco going compared to Rashmi. Where in Rashmi's case, you need to get like three different colors of pips and then another colorless mana. So even an opener with Bird of Paradise doesn't really help you get that Rashmi into play that ultra fast. It's still gonna be a turn free Rashmi with a Bird of Paradise in your hand. An Ancient Tomb will speed up your Paco getting into play, but it won't really speed up Rashmi getting into play. However, Rashmi are costing things potentially for free. You don't need to pay mana for the spells that you steal if you have more artifacts than the spell you've stolen CMC. And also you're generating treasures. And now I would like to just spin off the entire view of this commander in a completely different direction. Max the Daredevil. Whenever you cast a second spell each turn untap target creature, then investigate. Now the cool thing with Max is usually that you get to investigate, you create clues, and clues can be converted into card draw. However, when you playtest Max, you realize that untapping a creature is actually quite good. Like it's... Max kind of becomes like a mana dork, or a very special mana dork. Like you can untap your Bird of Paradise, but you can also untap your Bloom Tender. And on turns where you don't actually want any card draw, you just want more mana, Max is actually helping out in those. I realized that in playtesting. And Rashmi and Ragavan are more or less the same. You create a treasure token. And treasures are good. And now I have to mention something really important. It's often gonna be that you hit nothing with this. Like we who played Ragavan a bunch have realized that sometimes you hit lands and sometimes you hit junk, like things you can't use. Now sometimes you exile combo pieces and sometimes you steal really key cards like Brainstorm, that's good, Demonic Tutor, that's amazing, Mystic Remora, that's great, 
add nauseum wow now we're really happy tainted pack that's good hit underworld breach yeah that's good or sometimes you get the underworld breach that we've hit with rashmi stay in exile forever the same thing with potential fastest oracle as well so there are chances that you hit something good but there are situations where you hit nothing and that's what i really like about paco and tibalt cosmic imposter the fact that they are hitting four things means that the chance of hitting something good is actually pretty likely. So I don't think that you should look at Rashmi as a value engine. Like it's gonna give you some card right here and there maybe, but a lot of the cases you just aren't. Like you're gonna hit lands and things you can't use. Sometimes you're hitting good, but in a lot of cases, because you're only hitting one thing each turn, the chance of hitting something that doesn't do anything for you is pretty likely. But playing the typical Teamer game works pretty fine. In the description below, as always, link to the deck list you're currently looking at. So, what do we do in Teamer? Easy. Underworld Breach. Oh, by the way, the One Ring is in here as well. Great card. I've actually played this a bunch, and I gotta say, I really like it. Where is... There's the Brain Freeze, and we actually passed it. Lion's Eye Diamond. This is a very clean Underworld Breach combo where you have Lion's Eye Diamond, Brain Freeze. You cast things from your graveyard by escaping them, generating mana with the Lion's Eye Diamond, and use Brain Freeze to mill out all of your opponents. And then you can basically just pass turn and let everyone die to decking themselves. Or after you've made everyone deck themselves, you make them draw a card somehow. But in general, you don't need anything more besides Lion's Eye Diamond, Brain Freeze, and Underworld Breach. With this, you will mill out all your opponents and they will usually die, depending on what kind of deck they are on. Sometimes they have Titans, but that's very rare these days. But I've built this deck quite focused on artifact stuff. So for example, I have an Ursa in this deck that can make all of our treasures that our commander are generating to tap for blue mana. And I don't really think that the value engine from this commander is like that but good. Then, But Ursa is like potentially decent. We, you can pump mana into Ursa sometimes. Now we do have a bunch of counter spells and it's really sad to flip into those with Ursa. But Ursa creating a construct, Ursa could activate sometimes, and you get to keep your treasures, so yeah, I kinda like him. I also have the Gruul version of Ursa, the one is tapping them for green mana. And you can also exile the top card of your library and cast things with this elf artificer as well. We have Professional Facebreaker, just added it to the collection. This guy is also generating treasures. Dockside. We don't play that many creatures, and sometimes you need ways to deal with hate bears. Hate bears are usually creatures. There are stacks effects that are enchantments, but a board wipe will usually solve the problem. Now this is dealing free damage to everything, and our commander is a 2-4, so it will actually survive. I specifically really like this board wipe because you can cycle it for free mana and just draw a card if you don't need to board wipe anything. Another big favorite of mine is Star Storm. Also cycling, so if you don't need it, you can throw it away. But it has instant speed, so you can... Very similar to a Cyclonic Rift. You basically tap out, let's go 4 mana to deal 2 damage to all creatures, or 5 mana to deal 3 damage to all creatures, or 6 mana to deal 4 damage to all creatures. And then you basically board wipe, you take your turn, you untap everything you have, you've cleared away all of the hate bears, and now you can combo and win with your Unduel Breach combo. We're playing a big artifact package to make use of the commander's ability to basically cast things for free if you have enough artifacts. And I gotta say, like I've already mentioned, the One Ring is actually pretty good. Or, well, it should be mentioned that the One Ring is a little bit slow compared to the speed of potential CDH games. Like some games are just over before this thing starts to do things. But after two activations, you've only taken two damage and you've drawn three cards with this thing. And then it starts to just escalates. Girapur Aether Grid is one of my actually favorite cards. Tap two artifacts, deal one damage to a creature or player. So this is actually a potential win con. If you just generate enough artifacts in treasures and tokens and clues and such, then you can sit there and just guttling them down creatures and eventually players all over the place. It's not great, but I like it. This is another personal favorite of mine, it's creating gold whenever you attack or someone attack the cursed player. Now this is also a group hug card, so bear in mind how you use it, but in my personal experience, I actually kind of like it. It's, it's generating a lot of value for you generally, and if you can combine this with all the tricks we're utilizing artifacts, then 
it could actually get pretty cool. We have rituals to get our commander into play faster. Also, we could use this ritual to get the one ring into play faster. But let's talk a little bit extra about the wing comb, the Andul Breach combo that we're going for. Now, you could have other combos in the deck as well, and we will get to that too. But let's begin with Andul Breach. We can't tutor for it. Or, well, we do have Muddle the Mixture. And Spellseeker can tutor for Muddle the Mixture. And then we have green tutors. We have a lot of green tutors that can search out and find Spellseeker. So find Creature Spellseeker, find Muddle the Mixture, find Undul Breach. That's an enormous tutor chain. And honestly, I don't really like it. And that's where I think this pro commander also struggles a little bit. So the value it's generating isn't that enormous. The colors it has isn't really enabling a great combo and the ways to find some of the best combos is a little bit tricky for her. Now I do play Andul Breach in my Paco Haldan deck as well. It's some of the plan B combo of sorts. It has a plan A combo. But the reason why Andul Breach works really well for Paco is very simple. You're attacking and drawing cards from your opponent's library. Four cards on each hit. So the chance of getting something, a tutor of sorts, to get your Andul Breach is pretty decent. It actually happens more often than you might think. And Rashmi will struggle in that. It's gonna be hard for her to find the Andul Breach. So in the end, you might need to add more combos and other tricks to this deck. One thing you could do, and I think this might be easier, is to lean to, into something like a Final of Devastation finisher. Rashmi is able to generate a lot of mana. If you build a very creature-focused deck with a lot of artifacts, a lot of hate bears in general, you could make an overrun build where you pay X into 10, basically 12 mana. Gaia's Cradle is a great tier, and all of your treasures with Rashmi. You could basically make all of your creatures overrun and kill all of your opponents. That could do it. But another direction is to go for Birthing Pod lines, which is a little bit tricky because Normally when you go Birthing Pod, you need white for Karmic Guide and Fella the Guardian. Well, you can actually replace Fella the Guardian with other things. But the usual finisher is that you go for Kiki Jiki with this thing. But you normally want white when you're doing that. So another more likely combo to go for is Dockside Timur Sabertooth to generate infinite treasures. That's good, but there's a problem. With infinite treasures, we can't actually do anything with the commander. Like, we can't win from infinite mana. This is not a fresh use. So you could have this inside deck, and then just have a lot of ways to win the game from the infinite mana. But it becomes kind of clunky, because you suddenly need a... Like, tutoring this in Timur is very easily. This is just a two-card creature combo. There's a lot of green cards that will find and get this into play for you to win the game efficiently. But you need more suddenly. You need ways to finish the game from the infinite mana as well. Now that isn't impossible, you can just include a lot of different X spells, and if you have a very high portion of those inside the deck, then you should be fine. So this is definitely a possible combo to go for as well, and it all kind of depends on how you want to tweak your Rashmi build specifically. I personally prefer Breach, because playing Breach doesn't really demand that much from your deck. You basically just need to add Lion's Diamond and Brain Freeze, and the rest of the deck can do whatever you want. But I hope I've showcased a few problems with Rashmi here in general, like the value you're getting from Rashmi isn't that amazing. It's not like Paco, where you hit four cards, in this case, you're just hitting one. The chance of hitting something great is very limited, the value of getting a treasure is pretty good, but it's not over the top. You don't have a clear wing con going for you. You have something. Like, you have some tamer combos in general, but it's nothing clear and direct that's gonna be very clean and perfect fit for this boss. She's not like Frasius. With Frasius, oh, I have infinite mana and I win. Don't need to think about it. Just get infinite mana, infinite colorless works fine, and you win. In Rashmi, infinite mana, it's just good. So in the end, as a finalized review, I have to say the following. Once there is a commander that is doing more or less the exact same thing, but better than that other commander is doing the better thing, is the CH viable commander, and this is just not CDH viable in the end. Even though the monkey is really cute, don't be discouraged to play this if you want to. I've actually played it. Uh, gameplay video is coming up soon in the future. On my other channel, the CDHTV Gameplay, 
link in the description below of the video for that channel if you want to take a look at this futuristic gameplay once I've edited it. It can absolutely win games. But in the end I have to say, if you want to steal cards from your opponent's libraries, then I highly recommend Paco and Haldan. Same colors, actually, in my personal opinion, easier to cost, strangely. The colorless mana is making it really easy. The part where you store and get to keep the cards instead of like you have to use them now is hugely different. And yeah, that is just the truth. In any case, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and you got inspired in any form of way, even though it wasn't a positive thing for the tamer thiefing things. Take care guys, and I'll see you in the next video.